to finish off the discussion no. so as a, as a last example of s3 so i want to show you a sub s3 you might ask yourself what's that now a sub s3 you remember we talked about Chesapeake Bay okay so there's there is a video on 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 the tides there are some examples of the tides in Chesapeake Bay which is a large uh, slightly stratified estuary but it has uh, a parent estuary which is the main channel and then it has all the river arms are called so-called sub estuary and this is one sub estuary which is called belt baltimore harbor and shown here is a salinity section okay only about 15 kilometers long and 25 meters deep in in this in the sub estuary and here you can see a rather complex flow structure where low uh, where, where this actually flows into that sub estuary near the surface and near the bottom and a return flow in between very very complex flow structures and sub estuaries so don't think it is it's, it, 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 it's easier sub estuaries can have these weird weird flows okay and indeed these flows are all driven through pressure gradients and the particular structure of density stratification that you and just to also mention that indeed the temperature can modify the circulation it's not only salinity temperature plays a role as well but the key stratification is set up by the salinity field all right here's the summary of estuary examples we talked about salt wedge estuaries and there are all the names of the examples highly stratified slightly stratified vertically mixed estuaries inverse estuaries salt plug estuaries and sub estuaries okay and now we start with the second part of this lecture which is about flow magnification 